Good morning. I'm Heather Hunthausen, and today I want to tell you about day three of the Somato Emotional Release class that I took at the Upledger Institute, which is a training for the third level of craniosacral therapy. Good morning. I'm so glad to have you here with me. So today I'm going to be talking about, oh, it's 10 o'clock. I'm early. I'm going to be talking about my experience. Good morning. Um, where I learned how to get my ego out of the way and step into my divinity completely. And I know that a lot of people struggle with that. And I got to see it firsthand just how much our ego is trying to distract us from our greatness and from our brilliance. And so I wanted to share with you the story of what happened to me during my SER um, day three. If you saw day one, day one was this like bunch of contraction and was really a preparation. Day two, I actually birthed the baby. If you saw that one, it's pretty exciting. And then, um, you know, after birthing a baby, who would know that there would be even more? But day three was really after I birthed the baby, I had the experience of having my heart be completely open and expanded. And so, of course, day three is about stepping into my divinity and letting go of that crazy ego. Um, what do we call it? The big ego who likes to hold you small. Uh, so, um, you know, how, how do we overcome the itty bitty shitty committee? Okay, so what's in? Ah, Jules, perfect. Jules is actually the one. I love her expression, the itty bitty shitty committee. And so what is the itty bitty shitty committee? Okay, well, those are the voices in your head that tell you who you should be and who you are and how stupid you are and how annoying you are and that you should shut up and you should be small. Okay, this is what my itty bitty shitty committee tells me. Um, and it was really interesting because as soon as they put their hands on me, I went into this somato emotional release and day three was about communicating with each other. And so I don't want to go into all the details of it because it's very, very long and very like, there was a lot of distraction. My brain was like trying to push the therapist away from my healing, um, which is what we do, right? That's what we do in our lives. Uh, our ego is trying to protect us. It's trying to keep us small. It's trying to keep us um, safe. It's trying to keep us protection. Uh, evidently, Jules did that all weekend. <laughs> so um, when, when we have someone working with us, so here's the deal. I read a lot of books and I went to a lot of therapy, but I didn't change because I was actually afraid to feel. Can anybody relate with that? So I've been working on feeling now for about 10 years. And now I know that feelings won't kill me. It only took me 10 years to realize that. Um, and, you know, here's the deal. We're all the same. And actually, um, the more that I'm connecting to myself, the more that I'm connecting to my divinity, the more I'm realizing if you're watching this right now, you're part of my soul family. And we're all here to learn a different lesson and then teach it to each other. Um, whether we're teaching it verbally or we're just teaching it in the, in the unconscious or the non-conscious or the collective conscious, um, all of our souls know this truth that we're all valuable and we're all worthy. Um, and it's not about how smart we are or what job we have or how much money we make or how many people we help. Um, it's about that moment when everything falls out from under you and you have nothing left. It's about that moment when you literally go into the pit of despair and you recognize that you have these beliefs. I recognize that I have these beliefs that I'm unworthy, I'm unlovable, I'm disgusting, I'm annoying, nobody likes me, nobody loves me, nobody, how could anybody ever love me? When it, everything falls out from under you and then you have nothing left and that's actually the place where um, the peace comes. When you get to that place of ridding yourself of all of that nasty, yucky stuff, that's actually where the peace comes in. And it might feel like a free fall because your ego has such a tight hold on you and it's telling you to stay small and to stay safe and stay protected. Um, and you know, that's a cool thing that it does because it's trying to keep you alive. Um, but when you get to that place where you realize the ego is really just holding you in place, um, and then you let go of all of that, you really like hit rock bottom, you know, the way that they describe it. 
um, that's actually when you experience total freedom because there's nothing left to hold on to. So I'll give you a little tiny uh, storyline of what my SER looked like so that if you wanted to try SER, you know, you might have an idea of, well, anyway, what it looked like for me, everybody's experiences are different, but I think it's always fun to hear other people's stories so that you can say, oh gosh, you know, I, I might need to do some of that work on myself or, oh yeah, I could definitely see myself doing that. So it starts out that there's all this fear, right? So it's, there's this theme happening for me every time I lay down on the table and I put their hands on me, there's this like fear. And there's this fear and this terror and I'm back in the closet, I'm six years old. This is repetitive for me. I've done a lot of hypnosis on this. I've done a lot of psycho-emotional work on this. This scene keeps coming up. But the really beautiful part about the way that Upledger Institute teaches this is that the therapists aren't leading it. So you ever had like a guided meditation where they're like, imagine you see yourself in a field, blah, 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 and you see a deer and the deer says something, whatever. That's the therapist guiding you. It's very different when you're the one guiding, you know, the picture and you're telling the therapist what the picture is. So I've been in the closet lots of times with lots of therapists and lots of therapists have told me what to do in the closet and I've done it and it's never really been very successful. But this time, since I had this new technique, which I love and I'm using all the time now, I got to say what I needed. And so the therapist just is asking questions like, well, then what happens? Well, what next? Well, now what do you need? Well, now what happens? And so where usually this inner child is freaking out in the closet, um, I had the experience of taking the tension of the whole entire family. Now I'm six years old. I take the tension of the whole entire family and I put it into my body and I can literally see this red anger and hate and tension going into my muscle tissue. It was wild. And so then the therapist is like, well, what do you want to do with that? You know, I'm like, I want to get it out. And they're like, well, how are you going to get it out? And I bring my adult self in like this Heather and I teach my little Heather how to not let other people's energy affect me because, you know, I've been a body worker for 20 years. So I've learned how to not let other people's energy affect me. So I'm teaching the little girl this. And it's amazing because she like lets go of all of this um, pain and hate that actually wasn't hers. So my little six-year-old let go of all this pain and hate that I was literally holding in my body because I was trying to take it for someone else. Talk about being codependent, right? I learned really at a young age how to be codependent. I literally took their anger into my body so and their tension of the household into my body so that they wouldn't have to feel it which, you know, is, is also beautiful and amazing. And I'm grateful for it because it taught me how to be a healer because I can literally take people's anger and tension and struggle away from them if that's, you know, what's necessary. But I don't like to do that anymore because I realize now that your, your anger and your hate and your struggle is yours and you get to learn how to deal with your own forgiveness and your own coming back into yourself and your own becoming whole again and remembering who you are and remembering that that's not yours. But anyway, that's another topic. So then um, I'm feeling all this fear, like literally gripping me around the throat. And all of a sudden it's like black snake of shame. Okay. They're, like they're walking me through this, you know, it doesn't just happen like this, but I'm, I'm experiencing this in my body as they're put their hands around all these different parts of me. And I'm exper I experience this black, like, snake of shame that lives inside me and I've experienced it before. Oh, and there's this lock around my throat and we're talking to the lock and the lock is like, listen, it's my job to just shut her up. Like she's annoying. She's too big. She's more than anyone can handle. And she's just got to fucking shut up. Oh, excuse my language. That's what the lock was saying. And so literally I have placed this lock around my throat to keep me from being too big and too annoying and too obnoxious so that people would like me. That's the lock's job around my throat. So I don't talk, I don't sing, and I've shut down my fifth chakra completely. So they're like, well, what do you wanna do with this lock? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And the craziest part of this whole thing is my conscious mind is throwing diversions like all over the place at these poor therapists. And I mean, she did such an amazing job of staying with me. I'm like, well, there's a lock around my throat. Well, now there's a snake. Well, now there's this. And now there, I mean, I'm throwing and she's trying to stay with me with the lock or she's trying to stay with me with the snake. 
And I know, right? It's those that sad faces. Yeah. Well, and this is what we do as human beings. We're trying to stay safe. We're trying to stay alive. We're trying to stay surviving. And so what we do is we put these pieces in place because we think it's going to keep us surviving when really what it's doing is keeping us from thriving. But the ego thinks that if we're thriving, we're probably going to kill ourselves, which might be true. You know, um, I was rollerblading yesterday and the faster I went, the more expansive I felt and the more I loved it. And my ego was like, you're going to die. Right. So the ego is completely in contradiction to thriving and expanding and like really taking life for all that it's worth because the ego is actually trying to keep me from dying. That's its job. So I've got this lock around my throat. I've got this snake inside of me telling me to be small and hold it all together. And nobody's ever going to like me. And I'm so annoying because I'm too big and I'm too loud and I talk too much and I say too much and I laugh too loud and all this. And they're like, well, what do you want to do now? And all of a sudden out of nowhere, my warrior goddess that I've done lots of other hypnosis is on. And I do a lot of my own like inner meditations with her. She comes in and she slices the lock right off of my throat and cuts the snake right in half. And, you know, it's funny because what we're learning in this class is that we want to actually be negotiating. We want like the goddess to negotiate with the lock and with the snake. And, you know, it's a negotiation process. But no, my goddess was like, <laughs> and just cut all that shit right off, which was so awesome because I actually got to experience my whole full expanded self i actually got to i had released all of that hate and all that tension and all of that that i picked up from everyone in my household i removed this lock that keeps me from saying what i want to say i removed all this shame about being annoying and nobody liking me and now all of a sudden i had this experience of being i mean i don't have any other words for it other than like being god i got to be god and so the, the therapist interjects her own little thing just for a moment there. And she's like, well, can Heather stay here all the time, you know, in this like godlike state? And my goddess self is like, no, that's not the point. You know, the point of living is to experience. The point of living is to go through the struggle. Like, that's why you're here. You're here to realize that you're not limited like that's the whole point and so you know my goddess is saying like heather can step into me at any time she needs me but the whole point is just to be a person it would be like walking up a mountain right it would be like walking like let's say i want to i want to explore the grand canyon right it would be really different to just fly over the grand canyon or see a picture of the grand canyon which is what i got being in the goddess self it's way different to like not be able to breathe because of the altitude and you're like climbing and it's hot and you know, having the actual experience is you're learning so much more having the actual experience. And my goddess self was telling the me, the Heather self, the one who's here in the body right now having this experience, you're a teacher for God's sake. How are you going to teach anybody anything if you don't experience it for yourself first? It would be like if I just flew you to the top of the mountain and then you tried to explain to the people, this is what it's like at the top of the mountain. No, nobody cares about that. They care about the sweating and the crying and the passing out parts. Like that's the fun part. That's the part that we all relate to. You know, the part that we all relate to is that some part of us, maybe we were really, you know, we're here to be these big expansive beings. Right. Yeah. And God wants to experience through us. Exactly. You know, we God comes here through us to experience itself. Yeah. Right. Jules, you're so awesome to experience itself. And it wants to cry. And it was, so I gave myself these parents who said, Heather, you're too big. Hold it all together for God's sake, Heather. Stop dancing around in circles. Stop drawing on napkins all the time. Get your head out of the clouds. You're so annoying. Your laugh is too annoying. You should be, you should have manners. You should hold it all together. You should be quiet. Nobody's ever going to like you like that. And I believed them and I believed, and then, and then, I mean, this is so crazy. I'm telling this story in the class on the last day. And I say, I, I have a belief that I'm annoying. And my instructor laughs and he's like, <laughs> And I was like, and I pointed at him and I said, see, there's confirmation. 
my perception is he just laughed because I am annoying. He experiences me as annoying. And that's a recognition response. And, and I can prove it to you all day long just how annoying I am because people are showing me how annoying I am all of the time. And it was so cool to experience this God presence and to know that I was actually made that way on purpose. I was made to be annoying and loud and laugh too hard and be too big. And when I experience myself as this goddess self, it's literally like I have this vision in my mind of, you ever seen like the side of a volcano when all of the shrubbery is all so lush and green and there's like waterfalls and it's just so ridiculously beautiful and amazing. I felt like that in that moment as that goddess self. I felt like the most beautiful creation in the history of the world. And I thought, if you wanna look at me and think that that's annoying, there's something wrong with you. That would be like if you sat next to a babbling brook and you're like, wow, this babbling brook is so annoying. Listen to the noise of all of that bubbling nonsense. Like that's your problem. That's not my problem. If I wanna be a beautiful, lush side of a mountain with a waterfall and that's annoying to you, tough crap. I don't really care anymore. Show the infinite of God, right? Like how could that possibly ever be annoying? How could my beauty and my being ever be annoying? But my ego and the lock on my throat and the big shaped snake tells me all the time that I better hold it all together and nobody's gonna like me. So, how do we, you know, stop letting your big ego hold you small, nobody's better than anyone else, how to overcome the itty bitty shitty committee? It's, it's allowing yourself, like Jules is saying, allowing yourself to tap into who you are. You know, my Facebook group and my business name is called Beautifully Authentic. And I think some people think that being authentic means that if I'm in a bad mood that I should be like, you know what, I'm in a really bad mood. I'm being authentic. Like, no, that's not what I meant. What I meant was who you were, who you came here to authentically be. Like the authentic God spirit that lives inside of you and how beautiful it is. And dude, I got to experience it. I got to experience how freaking beautiful my authentic self is. And that's why I named my business Beautifully Authentic. Not because if you're in a crappy mood, you get to tell everybody that, you know, it's, it's authentic. I'm in a crappy mood. You know what? You're in a crappy mood because you're super far away from who you authentically are. If you're in a crappy mood, you get to look at what circumstances are happening in front of you because they're the opposite of who you're meant to be. And, and that's awesome. If you're in a crappy mood, it's just information. It's just, if you don't like your circumstances, just information letting you know that you're not being who you're supposed to be here to be or who, who you really actually want to be. There's no supposed to be. You know, it's who you actually want to be, your fully expanded self. So I think I covered everything I wanted to tell you guys about. Yes. So, yes. Okay, so, well, thanks for being here with me. I'm so glad that you are here. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you taking the time to be here with me. And, you know, if there's a message at all that's coming through me, it's allow yourself to be happy. Like, don't go looking for happiness. It isn't out there. If you're not happy right now in this moment, it's because you're out of alignment with your authentic self. You're out of alignment with your God self. Like if you're, if you're in this moment, you're sitting there and you're going, God, I'm not happy in my life. That's awesome because it's showing you like what would the opposite of what's happening be? And that's what will make you happy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is gonna make me cry. Um, I had this dream last night. I had this dream last night. Um, it was so weird. I've had these couple of dreams. My dreams lately have been so, what's the word? Like psychic, you know? I, uh, like if I dream it and then it happens. Um, and I had this dream last night 
that I wanted to get a haircut and I wanted to get a massage and I couldn't afford it and I started calculating how many massages do I have to do in order to be able to afford this and I woke up and I thought no like no something's not right here and I journaled and I asked God I said God what is going on and I'm just really understanding that my purpose here my purpose is to let God talk through me. That's it. Like, that's my purpose. And whether I'm doing that through a workshop or whether I'm doing that through massaging you or whether I'm doing that because you're my friend and we're having a cup of coffee. Well, while well, I'm having a cup of coffee today, it's happening. <laughs> um, but like, it doesn't have anything to do with money and what I can afford. It doesn't have, like, I'm really getting that, you know, I can create relationship out of nothing. Like, I, I love people so much and so big, and I've been so blessed to have so many, like, people say you have one soulmate in a lifetime, like, no freaking way. I have a soul family, and I'm meeting all of you, like, all of you, they're, they're, you're all coming into my awareness, and some of you I got to be intimate with, and some of you I got to be intimate in another way with, you know, but, like, I'm so good at relationships, and I was thinking, how do you be so good at relationships and so bad at something else? And it just, like, it doesn't make any, and the reason I'm so good at relationships is because I let God be in charge. Like, because I surrender that part. I completely, completely trust God with this part. And so I'm realizing the parts that I struggle with, I'm not letting God in. And it's been such a huge awareness for me. And I'm, I'm done with that. I remember being like 11 years old and being super preachy and uh, being like, oh, I remember my mom telling me she had a friend who had a problem. And I was like, well, don't, I can talk to your friend and I'll just tell your friend about the Holy Spirit of Christ. <laughs> and my mom was like, you're 11. Like you, <laughs> you're not gonna, he's like going through a divorce. You know, I'm like, I can talk to him. I can talk to him. And I remember being shut down from that. And I'm like, you know, have you ever been born again? Like I've been born again, again and again, <laughs> so many times. And I've been born again, again. And uh, I was talking to my friend Tiffany about this recently. And it's okay to be born again, again and again and again and again, because really all that means is I'm allowing myself to connect with my divinity. I am saying to my ego, thank you, but you don't have a freaking clue what's going on here. You don't have a freaking clue. Like, let it go. You know, let God be in charge, right? And um, it doesn't matter what the subject is. If I surrender it over to my higher self, if I surrender it over to my divinity, I'm taken care of. You know, the Bible, there's this one Bible verse that I love so much. It says something like, uh, you see the birds in the skies, you know, they're fed and I, and I take care of them. Do I not love you? Like, don't I love you? Something like, don't I love you more than the birds in the sky? And it makes me think like, of course God loves the birds and of course God loves us, whatever God is, the creator of all of this. But like, if a bird doesn't have to worry about where it's next meal is going to be. Why the heck do I? I mean, I have all of this consciousness and all of this ability and all of these people who love me and all of these people to love. Like, how could I ever, ever for a moment think that I'm not okay? Even for a moment. And how could I ever for a moment think that I'm not enough? Or or how could you ever think that you're not enough? Because I know when I look at you, I'm like, wow, like you're so amazing. You have so many gifts. I think that's one of my gifts. My, one of my gifts is to look at human beings and see their gifts. And I don't know if everyone has that gift. Does everyone have that gift? Like I look at people and I don't see what they aren't capable of. I see all of their potential. Jules, you know that, right? And I think that's what makes me a good coach. You know, I, I look at you and I see your full potential. And and I'm like dying to take you there, you know? Like that's 
what I love to do. Um, and, and I see people like that and I think, if I can see that in people, can't people see that in me? Or if I can see that in people, can't I see that in myself? And I would love to live in a world where everyone looks at each other and just sees each other's full potential and lets each other step into it, right? And we let ourselves step into our full potential and, uh, and that my full potential is as beautiful as the side of a volcano that's in full bloom with a waterfall. And how could that ever be annoying or how could that ever be not enough? It just, it doesn't make any sense. So at the end of this SER experience, I was laughing. I was laughing uncontrollably about how serious we take ourselves. You know, when, we, when you really sit back and you think about it, <laughs> like the whole thing, it goes so fast. You know, you're born, you do your life and you die. And in between you're like, oh, I didn't get it, whatever it is, you know, and, and we take it so seriously. And I had this glimpse of like the creator and just how silly all of that is. And I started laughing uncontrollably and I was laughing so hard and the girls who were working with me started laughing uncontrollably and we're all laughing so hard at the fact that we just take all of this so seriously. And then the people at a table, a couple tables away from us are like, shh. And I said, oh, oh, they think we're annoying because they're taking all of this too seriously. <laughs> and it was like, of course I'm annoying if you take this thing too seriously. If you take anything too seriously, anybody else who's not taking it seriously is annoying, right? Yes, it's so funny. I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And so you'll see uh, on Facebook posts lately, I hit the little laughy face a lot because I just am seeing just how serious people take all of this. And it doesn't have to be so serious. It can be light and it can be fun and it can be enjoyable and it can be happy and it can be fulfilling and it can be great and it can be connected and all of that and, and desire and wanting just shows you what you want more of. That's all. Just get it. Just go and get it. It's not that hard. Like it's really like the message is so clear and so simple. Just be you, be fully self-expressed and let people see you. And this is what vulnerability is all about, right? Just let all the walls down, let yourself be seen. You're so freaking beautiful and amazing. And let people see that and let people connect to that. And imagine the world we would live in if we could all do that. I wanna be in that world. I'm creating that world. I actually live in that world. Uh, the people in my space are doing that, and anybody who's in my space who's not doing that, I enroll them in coaching, letting me coach them into it. So, <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for joining me, and thanks for listening to my story. And if you're feeling like uh, any of this is resonating, and you're going, I don't know how to be my fully expanded, beautiful self, I want to learn how to do that reach out to me. We'll have a phone call, like a complimentary phone call. I don't care. I, this is the world I want to live in. Um, and if you're ready to like go for it, like, let's do it. Let's make it happen because I'm ready to make that happen for you. So y'all have an awesome week. Thanks for joining me. If you missed Sumato Emotional Release 1 and 2, you probably want to watch them because they're fun also. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to bringing you um, workshops. I, uh, I talked to God this morning and I've got three workshops that are three anyway, like speeches that are going to lead into workshops that I've got coming up. One is basically, I can't remember exactly what I wrote down, but something along the lines of your body is talking to you and it wants to show you how to get into your full authentic divinity. The second one is parenting. Uh, it's not a pain in the ass. It's a spiritual calling. It's a spiritual journey. And the third one, of course, is relationships and how I can find out uh, how to create happiness and fulfillment in my life through relationships. So those are coming and the workshops behind them are coming. I'm going to be working on creating that today. And I appreciate you being here with me. And please share this video if it touched your heart or if it supported you or served you in any way. And uh, I love you and I want to stay in relationship with you. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.